Stay all day. Stay You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all that, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques, all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to operate by accurate formulas. Not just any formulas, not just the formulas that make you feel good, but operate by accurate formulas. If you don't even, you may not even know what the hell I'm talking about when I say accurate formulas, but that's good. That's why you're here and that's why I'm here because I'm gonna explain exactly what that means here today. You will leave with an understanding of this today. Now, before we get into that, let me tell everyone, I have a daily motivation text message that I send out free of charge every single day to everyone who's in my text community. I want you in that text community. I want you receiving my daily motivation text. So here's all you have to do. Text me at the number that I'll be texting you from every morning. My number is 305-384-6894. Send a text to that number right now. And I guarantee to send you a message every day that's going to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. The number again, 305-384-6894. Now, on to this topic of how to operate by accurate formulas. I talked about the skill of accurate thinking in episode 2113. If you have not listened to that episode, go back and listen to episode 2113. It is listed down below in the show notes and every episode of History of the Show can always be found at workingyourgamepodcast.com. The thing about accurate thinking is something that Napoleon Hill talked about in his 17 Principles of Success, which by the way, in case you didn't know, I talked about that. 17 Principles of Personal Achievement is the actual title. Episodes 183 and 184 in this show. 183 and 184. When I talked about 17 Principles of Personal Achievement, I talked about accurate thinking there. So make sure you go listen to those as well. They are also listed down below in the show notes and as always at workingyourgamepodcast.com. So being accurate in your thinking. Accurate in your formulas matter a lot, and you're gonna under. I need you to understand what this means. Being accurate does not mean being correct. Being accurate does not mean that you necessarily agree with what is being told to you. And being accurate does not mean it is always gonna necessarily satisfy or please you or make you happy. But we're gonna get into all of that here today. So please turn the volume up and grab something to take notes with so that you can catch every piece of game that I'm giving you here today. First of all, let's get a definition of what accurate thinking is. Is So actually, let's get a definition of a formula first from vocabulary.com. A formula is generally a fixed pattern that is used to achieve consistent results. It might be made up of words, numbers, or ideas that work together to define a procedure or to be followed for the desired outcome. So when I refer to formulas, I'm referring to the same thing that I told you in episode 2013. The same things, the same way, every time. And then 100 episodes later, 2113, accurate thinking. So now that we know what a formula is. This is a fixed pattern used to achieve consistent results. Everybody got that? And a formula is following that fixed pattern that achieves consistent results in a consistent way over and over and over again. The good thing about formulas is that for creating the outcomes you want, most of the time those formulas already exist. All you have to do is identify them and plug yourself into them. Now, we gotta add this word accurate in there so that you understand this, because many of you, you might not even know it, many of you are following formulas right now, but you're following formulas that lead you to mediocrity, failure, inconsistency, and loss, and defeat. Now, we gotta get you following accurate formulas that lead to the things that you want, like winning, success, achievement, hitting your goals, and you know, all the other you know, teddy bears and stuffed animals and rainbows that you want in life. Now, you gotta have some goals in place. If you don't have goals, then I would suggest that you get yourself a copy of this book right here called The Mental Workbook. This is the book that says, the subtitle is Your Daily Self-Guide to Your Vision of Success. If you do not have a copy of this 500-page book, you see this right here? There are no pictures in any of the books that I write. So when I show you the side of the book and you see all these pages, all right, this is actual material. This is actual game that's inside of here, not images. And actually, you're the one who's going to be providing the game in the mental workbook because a lot of the pages in that book are for you to be writing in, not for me to be writing in. Because it's a daily journal for you to create your vision of success. And you can get that as part of the mental game super duper bundle 
when you go claim your free copy of my newest book called The Third Day by going to thirddaybook.com. On the third page of that process is a, a sales funnel. We're going to take you through the whole thing. On the third page, we're going to offer you a bundle that includes the mental workbook. So if you don't see it on the first page, that's because it's not there. It's going to be, it's going to be on the second, second page after that page. So again, it's at thirddaybook.com. That link is also down below in the show notes. Everything's down below in the show notes. Now let's get into the points. Today's topic, once again, is how to operate by accurate formulas. Number one, first of all, you got to erase the bad formulas. This is the first step in getting out of a hole is you got to realize you're in a hole and you got to stop digging. The first step to no longer doing things that are hurting you, the first step to doing things that will help you rather, is to stop doing the things that are hurting you. Erase the bad formulas. You got to, first of all, identify where am I operating by some formulas that are not working, some inaccurate formulas that are not getting me where I want to go and let me stop doing these things. In other words, if your current formula is not producing the desired results or results, stop applying that formula. So let's back up here. I just told you about the mental workbook. What are the goals that you wish to achieve? What are your desired outcomes? Do you have a list of desired outcomes? When I say desired outcomes, I mean things that you can check off on a box, you can measure them, you can say, yes, this is done, no, it is not done. Do you have a list of desired outcomes? Because if you don't, then it really doesn't matter what formula you operate by, none of them can be accurate or inaccurate because they have nothing against which they can be measured. So you can't say whether your weightlifting is working or not working if you don't know what the goal of lifting weights is. So what is the goal of you going to the gym every day? If you don't know, then we can't answer the question, is going to the gym worth it or not for you because you don't have an outcome. If your outcome is you just want to spend an hour doing something every day, then hey, we can say it's accurate because you can spend an hour in the gym. If you want to look at the guys or the girls in the gym, then we can say it's accurate. If you just want to burn off some calories, we can measure how many calories you're burning. But if it's some other goal, then we need to know what it is so we can measure. So the first thing is you got to have some outcomes so that we know whether the formula is producing the result or not. Everybody here took math class in school, right? Some level of math class, whether it was algebra, calculus, trigonometry, maybe a combination of all three. In each one of those, there are formulas that you learn that help you produce a desired result. But there's always a result. This is a good thing about math. There's always some type of result that is set to be achieved. A formula produces a result. So if you don't know what your results are, then formulas have no relevance to you. So what are the outcomes you're trying to get to? Do you know? If you don't, pause this episode, get some outcomes, then come back and listen to the rest of it. If your formula is not working, try something different. Stop applying that one, flip the formula around, turn it upside down, do something. Go ask somebody who is already producing the outcome that you want or someone who's coming close to doing so and ask them what they're doing. So maybe you can start applying their formula. Whatever you do, do not keep doing the same things over and over again when you realize that your formula ain't working. Did everybody hear what I just said? Do not keep applying the same formula when you realize that your formula is not working. This sounds like a very simple instruction. Maybe it's so simple as to where maybe I didn't even need to say it in the first place. Sounds so simple, right? When you say it all out. But how many of us have ever found ourselves doing the same thing over and over again, knowing that that thing didn't work, yet we couldn't stop ourselves from doing it or we didn't stop ourselves from doing it. It's not that we couldn't, we just didn't. All of us have been guilty of this at one point or another. So that's why, even though it sounds simple, it sounds quote unquote common sense, we still had to be reminded of it. We've all been guilty. Point number two, the topic once again today is how to operate by accurate formulas. Number two, now that we eliminated the stuff that doesn't work, oh, another thing we gotta eliminate, we're not done eliminating, you gotta eliminate feelings from the equation. You cannot operate by accurate formulas if you're putting your feelings in front of the facts. You cannot be accurate in anything in life when you're putting your feelings and your emotions in front of the factual information that is staring you in the face. We are talking about formulas here and formulas are based on objective reality. Everybody heard that? Objective reality. Do you know what that means when I say objective reality? Well, I will tell you that in episode 1808, I told you how to be objective. In episode 1800, I told you how objectivity became the new controversy. And I told you in episode 2009, the truth is objective. So there's this attack on objectivity that's happening these days, which is leading to many people 
putting your feelings in front of objective truth and facts, which is leading to a bunch of people operating since they're going by emotion instead of facts. They're going by their emotions, which means it leads to inaccurate thinking, which leads to results that they don't want, which leads to chaos. That's what's happening in the world right now. We got a lot of people who are moving themselves voluntarily towards chaos because they are basing their decision making on emotions and not facts, thus leading to inaccurate thinking, thus leading to outcomes that they don't want. But because they're being led by emotions and not objective reality, they keep doing more and more of the things that lead to the bad outcomes and they can't understand why things are not working. It's kind of like somebody keeps pressing their foot on the gas while their car is fast approaching the car in front of them. They're about to rear end that car. They want the car to stop, but they keep pressing their foot on the gas instead of the brake. That's what a lot of people are doing these days. Now, the question is not what a lot of people are doing. The question is, what are you doing? Are you eliminating feelings from the equation when you are making decisions? Are you making your decisions based on how you feel? Or are you making decisions based on what is accurate? And yes, those are two different things. And if how you feel and what is accurate happen to be the same thing, understand that that is a coincidence. It is correlation. It is not causation. Does everyone understand the difference between correlation and causation? Let me briefly explain. So I know some of you understand it, but I got to make sure I explain it so we don't leave anybody behind. No child left behind. Correlation means two things happening at the same time. Causation means one thing made another thing happen, and then they happened at the same time. Those are two different things. For example, every morning I wake up, usually when I wake up, it's dark outside. Actually, every single day when I wake up is, our, is dark outside, all right, and the sun comes up later. Sun usually comes up an hour or two or three after I woke up, almost every single day, consistently. Two to three hours after I wake up, the sun comes up. Now, let me ask you a question. Is me getting out of bed the cause of the sun coming up? Most of you will probably laugh at that. Say, Dre, that's ridiculous. Of course, you getting out of bed is not the reason the sun comes up. It comes up because it comes up. You getting out of bed just happens to coincidentally happen at two to three hours before the sun comes up. That is what we call correlation. I get up two, three hours later, the sun comes up. I'm not making the sun come up. They just happen to happen in relation to each other. That's why it's called correlation. Correlation. There's a relation, but it's not causing. Causation is me doing something and then something happens. For example, I got a, a boxing trainer. I just worked out with him today, as a matter of fact. We were working on jabs a lot, whole lot of jabs. I'm right-handed, so the jab hand is the left hand. My left shoulder is very, very sore right now because we're doing a lot of stuff working on the jabs here today. So my left shoulder is extremely sore while I'm recording. So you're looking on video, you can't see that it's sore, but trust me that my left shoulder is very sore right now. That is causation. When I work out with my boxing trainer, his name is Shota, my left shoulder is more sore than the days that I don't work out with him. That is causation. Uh, that's not a correlation. It is causation. The things that I'm doing in that boxing workout is making my left shoulder very sore. And I can feel the way it feels right now is going to feel sore even tomorrow morning. That's causation. Something causing another thing to happen. Correlation is two things just happen to happen at the same time or close to the same time. Your feelings and accurate thinking are correlated, maybe. And often they are not. So in other words, let me give you an example. Let's say I'm running two advertisements on, I'm running two advertisements on Facebook or Google or Bing or LinkedIn. I'm running advertisements, right? And I think advertisement A is going to produce a higher ROI than advertisement B. Why? I have no logical reason for it. I don't have any data. I don't have any stats. I just believe that that uh, campaign, advertising campaign A is going to do better than advertising campaign B. That's just my feeling, my emotion. Now, should I make my decision based on that feeling or emotion? Based on what I just told you, of course, we all know the answer is hell no. Of course, you shouldn't make, you shouldn't make a logical decision based on emotional feelings. That makes no sense. That's stupid. But people do this every single day. Now, let's just say that when I look at the stats, I find out that indeed, advertising campaign A is outperforming advertisement campaign B. Does that mean that the next time I run a campaign, I should just go off my feelings and not look at the stats since my feelings happen to be right this time? No, because my feelings were right. That was dumb luck. That was just simple correlation. I thought advertisement A would work and it ended up working, but that's not the reason that it worked. The reason it works because we looked at the stats and it had nothing to do with my feelings. My feelings didn't make advertisement A perform better than advertisement B. My feelings were just a hunch, but you don't make, you don't make logical, rational business decisions, especially something that can be measured on feelings and emotions. Even if 
you do have the final say in making the call. You still don't make your call based on feelings and emotions. A great book that can help you check yourself on this is a book called Principles by Ray Dalio. Any of you haven't read that book, any book that I mentioned here on the show, whether it's mine or somebody else's, you need to go buy it while I'm talking about it. Again, it's called Principles. The author is Ray Dalio. Spell it how it sounds. Eliminate feelings from the equation. All right, we're talking about formulas here, everybody. Formulas are based on objective reality. They, they, they do not care about your feelings. They do not care about your opinions. Your opinions, it's not that your opinions don't matter because there are some of you who hear that and they say, oh, what you're saying, Dre? My opinions don't matter. My feelings don't matter. What I really think doesn't matter. For the most part, they don't. But let's just say, just to humor you, let me tell you what to do with your feelings and opinions. You test them out. That's what you do. You test them out. So if I get an idea, let's just say I go to thirddaybook.com where I have my book, The Third Day, I'm often changing something on one of those pages. We call it split testing in the marketing world where you change certain elements on the page and you see if this headline works better than this headline or this video or this picture or these words, this color, et cetera, et cetera. If I get an idea that, hey, maybe I should try this type of headline, maybe it'll work better than this headline that I have currently running, I will test it out. I'm not gonna change everything I'm doing based on my opinion. That, again, that makes no sense. But I will test it and let's just see. Maybe I got a hunch that ends up being a good idea, but I had to test it and it must win in an empirical way that is based on data, not on a way that is based on uh, just what I think, whatever my idea is. I told you about this in episode 2141. The data decides. The data always makes a decision when you have data. Again, that's episode 2141. So when I wanted to play pro basketball, for example, my opinion was that I was good enough to play pro basketball, but my opinion alone did not get me signed to a contract. You understand? Your opinions can be tested, but they are not the final decision maker for producing a result. And usually you're, nobody gives a damn about your opinions except you. Maybe the people who work for you, but this is the dangerous part, especially when you're the person on top, that you think, if you think, your opinion is how every decision should be made, then you are putting yourself in a position of peril. Meaning eventually your opinion is going to be wrong and you're going to hurt yourself and everybody else involved because you made a decision based on opinions, not based on data. Listen to episode 2141 so you can keep yourself from making this stupid error, committing this stupid mistake. Always keep this in mind. So the formula for me to play pro basketball was not, I feel like I should play pro ball, then I'm going to play pro ball. That's not the way it works. The formula was I needed to go somewhere and get seen while playing against pro level competition. That's what I hadn't had in college because I played at a level where most of the players were not pro level. So I did that. Went to an event called an exposure camp. That's what I did. I paid for that out of my pocket. I played well there. So I was following a formula. Then I took the footage from that event. I marketed myself to find an agent. Finding an agent was the next step in my formula. And then that agent helped me get signed to my first contract. That is the formula. I learned that entire formula on the fly. Nobody told me the formula up front. Somebody had told me up front I might have got signed to a contract or I sooner, but I didn't know it. I had to figure that formula out. And now here's what I do. I teach that formula to other people. You see these books behind me? If you're watching this on video, you see these blue books and these yellow books here? These are all my books on overseas basketball. I got a book on the blueprint. That's the overall overseas process. And I got a book on agents. I got a book on exposure camps. I got a book on the business side of the game. All, what are they? Me giving you the formula that I had to decipher and learn on my own. Every book that you see behind me, these are all my books, are all based on formulas that I figured out. I just have the ability to articulate and explain them and break them down in a systematic way so that I can teach it to other people. All right, That's what authors do. That's what I do here on the show. I take a formula that I already understand and I explain it to other people. Simple as that. And anybody can do this once you understand a certain formula that works and you can break it down in such a way that someone else can use it and is not just proprietary uh, to yourself and your personal situation. So I learned that formula on the fly and that's why now I can turn around and teach it to other people. But if I had defaulted to doing what most people do, inaccurate thinkers, this is what most inaccurate thinkers do. And some of you are going to be talking about you right now when I say this. If I had defaulted to listening to my personal opinions and my personal feelings about the situation, rather than looking for a formula that worked, i.e. accurate thinking, I would have not taken all of those additional steps, like going to an exposure camp, like finding an agent, like marketing myself to get on a team and get myself an agent. I wouldn't have taken those steps. I would have just went off my feelings. I would have sat on the couch and said, I feel like I should be playing pro ball. I'm not signed yet. I feel like I should be playing pro ball. I'm not signed yet. I feel like the teams are hating on me. I feel like nobody's giving me a shot. I feel like all I need is an opportunity. And guess what? I hear this from players all the time. 
So this is how I'm able to say this because I know that this, these are the kind of things that people are saying all the time. They're saying it directly to me. I feel like I should have an opportunity. I should be on. I'm good enough to play. I would just need a chance. And nobody gives a damn how you feel. Nobody gives a damn how you feel. But if you apply an accurate formula to any situation, you will achieve an outcome. Usually your desired outcome. This is the way the world works, people. This is not, these are not Dre ideas. This is the way the world works. Now, you can deny this if you wish. Right, it's your life. Right, you're the one who has to live with it. You're the one who's going to die, and they got to put on your tombstone what you accomplished. All right, now, I've never seen a tombstone that said, well, they felt like they should have been successful, but... All right, so what are you going to do? The formula matters a lot more than your opinion matters. More people than should default to thinking that their feelings and opinions matter more than the objective reality in front of them when it comes to following a formula. Usually because listening to your opinion, this is the reason why this happens, listening to your opinion requires a lot less effort, a lot less work, and it doesn't require you to have any hard conversations with yourself when you just listen to your own opinions. It's not a hard conversation to believe what you already believe. It's a hard conversation, though, when someone gives you a formula that flies in the face of what you've been believing for the last 10 years. That's hard to do. And this is why many people never change in life. They get a certain opinion. They decide that's going to be their opinion. They decide that's the way they're going to think about things. And they don't want to hear anything that goes against that. And they live the whole rest of their lives thinking what they want to think. Just doing things the way they want to do it. Which is fine. Everyone has a right to live life how they want to live it. So if you ever catch somebody doing this and you try to put them on game and they don't want to hear it, it you did what you had to do. All right, what's that, that Silk the Shocker song? It ain't my fault. It ain't your fault. All right, just let them think how they want to think. Following a formula that actually produces a result might require you to do some things that are different from what you're doing right now. And here's the fact, folks. Most people are lazy. They just don't want to do anything other than what they want to do. They don't want to think any way other than how they want to think. And they got a right to that. And you do not have a right to change it. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is how to follow accurate formulas in life. Now, how do you develop a formula for yourself? For where you want to go, who you want to be. For the things that you want to do. I'm going to tell you to do the same thing that I did when I wanted to play professional ball and I didn't know how to do it. Work backward from your desired result. Simple as that. How do you find a formula? So, look at the outcome you wish to achieve. Then ask yourself the following question. And say it exactly this way. What would need to be true for me to achieve this result? What would need to be true for me to achieve this result? Then ask yourself, what would need to be true for that to happen? Then ask it again, what would need to be true for that to happen? And just keep asking it and you're going to keep working backwards until you have worked your way all the way back from the desired result to where you stand today. And this could be five steps, it might be 10, it might be a thousand steps. Work your way backward, do the work, folks, do the work. This is creating a formula. A formula will guarantee your success as long as you can follow it and you can stay disciplined. So this is worth the effort, all right? This is one of those investments that is a good investment that will pay you back. So do the work, however many steps it is, to where you, can, where you stand today. Now understand something. When you create a formula for yourself, you might be wrong. You might create a formula and say, well, I think this is the way that I need to do it. Because look, you don't know what to do. Because if you knew, then you wouldn't have a challenge in the first place. So you might end up incorrect. Maybe one of your steps is wrong. This is the wrong step. I thought this was the next step to take, but it turns out I was wrong. That's fine. What you think needs to be true may not actually be the accurate thing that needs to be true. So you may be inaccurate in your theory because you don't know, right? That's okay. Here's what you do. By even asking yourself these questions, you'll at least have a plan, a working plan, a primitive formula that you can test so you can find out where you are right and where you are wrong. Okay, that's what you want. You just want to find out where am I correct here, where am I accurate, and where am I inaccurate. That's all you want to find out. Because as you start doing things, you'll get what I call activity knowledge. Because you are out there in the field, 10 toes deep, doing stuff, you will learn what works and what doesn't, and you iterate, you make changes, you make adjustments, and then you go right back out there and you do it again. Work your plan, and, you're, and as you're executing, 
You'll see what works, what doesn't. Make your adjustments, go back out there, do it again, and just keep trying different versions of your plan until you find a plan that works. The reason most people fail in life, Napoleon Hill talked about this in The Law of Success, is that they, are, they lack persistence in working different versions of their plan to find one that works. This is the reason why many people fail, not because they don't know what to do. Listen, nobody knows what to do. So if you think the reason you don't have your outcome right now is because you don't know what to do, that's bullshit. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody who you look at as quote unquote successful knew what to do when they first started. They just started anyway and they learned along the way. So not knowing what to do is not some abnormality. That's normal. Everybody doesn't know what to do. Your job is to start with something, make your adjustments along the way, and you learn as you go. Simple as that. Point number four. Today's topic, once again, is how to operate by accurate formulas. This is something that a lot of people are not doing these days. This is why they're coming up short. Let me give you a cheat sheet to help you eliminate everything that I just said in point number three about all the mistakes that people make and why people come up short because they don't have persistence and they don't just show up and they don't get started because they use the excuse of, I don't know what to do. Let me give you a cheat sheet. Find someone who has already achieved the desired outcome that you want and just follow their formula. Find someone who's already done what you want to do and then follow their formula. In other words, whatever they tell you to do, do it. And when they look at what you're doing and they say, all right, this thing that you're doing is not working, is not going to work. You should probably stop doing that or do it this way instead or do it in this order instead of the way you're doing it. Do what they told you to do. Are you capable of that? Well, I know everybody's capable of that. Let me ask a better question. Are you willing to follow that? Now, let me tell you something that I know from personal experience. You are capable 100%, but are you willing? And that one, I don't know. That's one that I got I to gotta put a big question mark on that one. Not everybody is willing to follow such formula. Everybody is capable, but not everybody is willing. Many people are so emotionally bought into their own ideas and their own beliefs of how things are and how things should go, even when their beliefs have proven to not produce any results, they still want to think the way that they want to think. And they have a right to that. I'm not telling you that they're wrong. They have a right to that. But understand, just understand what you're signing yourself up for when you decide to follow your own opinions instead of following accurate information. When it's clear that following your opinions does not produce the desired outcome. So the cheat sheet is follow, find someone who already has achieved it. Follow their formula. Good news about following someone else's formula is that people who have created success are usually fairly outspoken about letting you know that they've created success. I Meaning they want you to know they created success. I'll tell you how I did it. They will tell you exactly how they did it and how you can do it. So you don't need to figure anything out. That's the good part. You don't need to figure anything out. All you got to do is follow someone else's blueprint. To do this requires you to go back to point number two. And what I told you in point number two is remove your opinions and feelings from the equation for no other reason than you have not created the success yet. So your opinion doesn't matter. I mean, who wants to hear the opinion? Who wants to hear somebody's opinion on achieving X when that person with the opinion has not achieved X? Why does anybody give a damn what you have to say? I mean, a person's not in great shape. Uh, why do we want to hear your opinion on fitness? I remember years ago, somebody had took a, a video that I posted on YouTube. This was probably maybe like 2010, 11-ish. It was a video I posted on YouTube and somebody took that video and they posted the link on Facebook. And they left this, the caption to the video, or the, a comment with the video. They said, hey, here's a video by Dre Baldwin. And they tagged me in the video. So this is why I saw this. Here's a video by Dre Baldwin. And I was talking about something. I was offering some opinion that was kind of going against the grain of what many basketball players thought about something. I don't remember what it was. And this person said, well, what do y'all think of this? And they were just starting the conversation. And I remember looking at the comment section. I never, I did not respond. I didn't say anything in this, but it was this this chubby uh, white guy, he wasn't even chubby, he was fat. It was a fat white guy in the comment section to this video that this person had posted of me talking about basketball. And this guy was saying, well, that what he's saying is wrong because it wouldn't work against a really good player because this would happen and that would happen. I remember looking at the comment and I'm looking at this guy's profile picture and I'm thinking to myself, you fat motherfucker, what the hell do you know about what's going to work in a basketball game? And when have you ever done it that you are even offering an opinion? The point being, many people have these views and these opinions and these feelings about how things are and how things work in areas in which they have zero, zero qualification to even be offering an opinion in the first place. And then they want it, they would actually, I would bet 
Now, I don't, I'm not even going to go try to find this post from you know, 10 years ago, but I would bet that had I come, come into the comment section and defended myself that this fat white guy who was making this comment about what's going to work in a basketball game, which he ain't never played in, would probably defend himself and try to argue with me about why he was right and I was wrong. Me, the pro basketball player, me, the guy that the person that you are friends with on Facebook posted my video, he didn't post your video, posted mine. You're going to argue with me when you look like you're about a couple hamburgers away from a, an emergency doctor visit, but you're going to tell me how a basketball game works. This is how many people put themselves in positions of failure, is that they, want to, they value their own opinions and feelings more than they value accurate information. They are operating by inaccurate formulas. That's an inaccurate formula. And because you're operating by an inaccurate formula, you position yourself to lose. So I want to make sure you're not doing this. Remove your opinions and feelings from the equation for no other reason than you have no qualification to be offering one. You have no qualification to offer an opinion on something, at least when it comes to making it work, if you have never made it work. Everybody got it? So in that case, does your opinion matter? No, it does not matter. And if you are, if you are personally, if your feelings are hurt by the fact that I'm telling you that your opinion doesn't matter in an area in which you have not created success, then you need to listen to this whole episode again about accurate formulas because it is an inaccurate formula to take advice on achieving something from someone who's never achieved it. Now, would you do it? So why would you want anybody to do it? Just because what? Just because you? We supposed to listen? Doesn't make any sense. That is an inaccurate formula, folks. Let's recap today's class, which is how to operate by accurate formulas. A formula is generally a fixed pattern that is used to achieve consistent results. Everybody got it? Point number one, erase the bad formulas. The first step to get out of a hole when you realize that you're in one is you got to stop digging. Try something different, flip the script, do something that you haven't done before, flip, turn it upside down. Go ask somebody who is already producing the results that you want or someone who is coming close at least. Whatever you do, do not keep doing the same things over and over again and expecting to get a different result. We already know that is the definition of insanity. Point number two, eliminate feelings from the equation. We are talking about formulas here and formulas are not based on feelings. They are based on objective reality. You can test out your opinions, but your opinions alone do not create outcomes. What creates outcomes are following formulas that are proven to produce a desired result. Do not think that your opinions need to matter the most. The formulas matter much more than your opinions. If your opinions and your formulas happen to be in agreement, that is a correlation. It is not a causation. That this should not fool you into believing that you should always follow your opinion just because your opinion happened to correlate with the correct, accurate answer this one time. Again, not cause the answer, but correlate with. Two completely different things. Most people are not willing to do this because following a formula compared to following their opinion requires more effort, more work, and more hard conversations with themselves that most people are too lazy to have. Point number three, work backwards from the result. How do you find a formula? Just look at the outcome you want. Ask yourself the following question. What would need to be true for me to have this outcome? Then ask it again. What would need to be true for that to be in place? Then what would need to be true for that to be in place? And keep asking yourself that until you work backwards to where you are right now. And it's not guaranteed that this formula is always going to be perfect and accurate. And that's why you go and start working your plan. And as you work your plan, you see what works, what doesn't work. You make your adjustments along the way. And as long as you stay persistent, you will get to the outcome that you want. From there, make your adjustments. And point number four, here's a cheat sheet to eliminate all the problems that I talked about in point three with a lot of people who don't want to do that work, don't want to have those tough conversations with themselves. Find someone who has already achieved the desired outcome that you want and just follow their formula. Ask them how they did it. Ask them, could they deconstruct what they did? If, if they wrote a book, read it. They got a course, sign up for it. They got a mastermind, join it. Whatever it is, get into their heads so you can find out exactly what they did so you can work backward and achieve the outcome that they achieved. Usually people who achieve outcomes and they can do it in a formulaic way, they usually are offering something that will tell you how to do the exact same thing. Why? Because human beings have egos and we all like to be recognized for our accomplishments when we have them. So they will tell you exactly how they did it. So this requires you to go back to point number two, remove your opinions and your feelings from the equation because nobody gives a damn about the feelings and opinions of a person who has not achieved an outcome in that specific area. Why are you offering an opinion on something you've never done? Nobody wants to hear it. So if that bothers you, again, you're not ready to think accurately yet. So rewind and listen to this entire episode again and again and again until you don't have that problem anymore. All that being said, three things for you to do here. Number one, text me. Get my daily motivation. My number is 305-384-6894. Number two, sign up to get my Bulletproof Bulletin monthly magazine, physical magazine, straight to your doorstep every month. 
by going to bulletproofbulletin.com. And number three, join my Bulletproof Mastermind. That is the next step to go to past this show right here. Keep listening to the show. But the next step, people are really, to take, really ready to take your game when it comes to your personal and professional development to the next level. You are looking for someone who's going to help hold you accountable to give you the strategy. You want to make sure you're being consistent. You want to take the complex challenges and simplify them so that you can break them down and take care of them. And you want to connect with a community of like-minded professionals who are serious about the game and been handpicked and chosen by me. Join my Bulletproof Mastermind by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Again, that's workonyourgameuniversity.com. Links to all of those aforementioned are down below in the show notes. Work on your game. Dre all day.